a sperm is in fact a cell, the function of which is to convey the genetic data of the male to the egg cell in the woman's body. When it is examined closely, sperm looks just like a machine specially designed to carry this load. The front of the sperm is covered with armor. There is another layer of armor under the first, and under this second layer lies the cargo carried by the sperm. In this cargo are 23 chromosomes belonging to the male. All the information concerning the human body, right down to the finest detail, is carried inside the chromosomes. In order for a new human being to emerge, the 23 chromosomes in the sperm have to unite with the 23 chromosomes inside the mother's egg cell. In this way, the first foundations of a person's 46 chromosomes will be laid. The armor system at the head of the sperm will protect this valuable cargo from all danger right through its journey. But the design in sperm is not limited to this. There is a very powerful engine in the middle of the sperm. The end of the engine is connected to the tail of the sperm. The power produced by the engine turns the tail like a propeller and enables the sperm to move swiftly. Since there is an engine in the middle, it will need fuel to make it work. This need has been thought of and the most productive fuel for the engine, fructose, has been placed in the liquid surrounding the sperm. In this way, the fuel for the engine is provided throughout the length of the journey it will undertake. Thanks to this perfect design, the sperms head rapidly straight for the egg cell. When the length of the sperm and the distance traveled are considered, it emerges that this is relatively as fast as a speedboat. The production of these miraculous engines is carried out in a most expert manner. Inside each of the testicles, the sperm production centers, there are microscopic tubes of a total distance of around 500 meters long. The production inside these tiny tubes works just like the conveyor belt assembly system inside a modern factory. The sperm's armor, engine, and tail parts are assembled onto one another in turn. What emerges as a result is a real wonder of engineering. We have to think a little in the face of this reality. How do these unconscious cells know how to prepare the sperms in the appropriate form, despite the fact that they know nothing about the mother's body. How have they learned to make the armor, engine, and tail that the sperm will need in the mother's body? With what intelligence do they assemble these components in the correct order? How do they know that the sperm will need fructose? How have they learned to build an engine that runs on fructose? There is but one answer to all of these questions. The sperms and the seminal fluid that they are placed in were specifically created by God for the continuation of the human race. Şöyle bir düşünürseniz, sperma hücreleri baba organizmasında yapılmaktadır. Görevleri ise anne organizmasında husule gelmektedir. Ve e, dünya kurulalı beri yani insanlık aleminin tarihinde hiçbir sperma yaptığı görevden sonra, anne organizmasındaki görevinden sonra baba organizmasına tekrar dönüp kendisini yapan hücrelere neler yaptığını, 
efendim hangi güçlüklerle karşılaştığını, görevinin ne olduğunu söylemek imkanına sahip değildir. O halde nasıl oluyor da sperma hücresi, organizmada mevcut binlerce çeşit hücreden çok çok ayrı bir yapıya sahiptir. Sperma hücresi nereden babadan aldığı genetik yükü ileride hayat vereceği bir organizmaya götüreceğini biliyor ki başında, önünde bir zırh taşımaktadır. Sperma hücresi ileride bir hücrenin zarını delmek gerekeceğini nereden biliyor ki zırhın arkasına yerleştirilmiş bir takım kimyasal silahları birlikte götürüyor. İşte görüyorsunuz e, sperma hücresinin bütün bu yapısını yaptığı görevleri efendim üstlendiği e, olayları tesadüfen olması, e, tesadüfen yapması hatta bilerek tekrar edeye de yapması mümkün değildir. Burada Allah'ın yaratıcının kendisini nasıl görevlendirdiğini ve bu görevi nasıl mükemmel şekilde ifade ettiğinin en açık belirtisidir. This wonderful planning in the design of sperm is in itself a miracle of creation. In fact, God draws special attention in the Quran to the creation of the seminal fluid in which the sperms exist. It is we who have created you. Why then do you not accept the truth? Have you ever considered that seed which you emit? Is it you who create it? Or are we the creator? Some 250 million sperms at a time are sent to the mother's womb. This number is deliberately kept high because as soon as the sperms enter the mother's body, they find themselves facing lethal dangers. There is a dense mixture of acids in the mother's reproductive organs designed to combat bacteria. This acid mixture is also fatal to sperms. Within a few minutes, the walls of the womb are coated with millions of dead sperms. A few hours later, most of the 250 million sperms will have died. This acid compound, which is most important for the mother's health, is so powerful that it can comfortably destroy all the sperms that enter the womb. In that event, Fertilization could not take place, and the human race would come to an end. But God, who created the sperms, has also created precautions against the dangers that they will face in the mother's womb. While sperm is being produced in the man's body, a basic compound is added to the fluid that contains the sperms. This compound partially eliminates the effect of the acid in the mother's womb. Thanks to this, a number of sperm has passed the mother's womb and managed to reach the entrance to the fallopian tube. If you'll notice, the sperms all travel together in the same direction. But how do they find this right direction? How do they know where the egg, no larger than a speck of dust, is? The sperms find the way to the egg because another perfectly created biological system comes into action. The egg gives off a chemical signal to attract the sperms, which are about 15 centimeters away from it. The sperms head straight to the egg thanks to this signal. In short, the egg cell, which knows nothing about the sperms, and has never come into contact with them before, calls them to it. Two cells, perfect strangers to one another, engage in communication. This reality is another proof that egg and sperm are created in the most ideal form for each other.